Two weeks ago, Illinois Senator Barack Obama told NBC's Tim Russert that he was considering a presidential run in 2008. Next, he speaks about that, as well as religion, politics, and the war in Iraq, with the New York Times' Bob Herbert. His talk is just over an hour. As a presidential library, we are proud to attract speakers who are making headlines, but the headlines this week about tonight's speaker tell us that he may be poised not just to make news, but to make history. Our guest of honor is on this week's cover of Time magazine. His name is on the lips of Democrats and Republicans across the nation, and his new book, The Audacity of Hope, published this month and now on sale in our bookstore, tells us about a brand new form of political leadership. It's a great privilege to welcome Senator Barack Obama to the Kennedy Library. Senator, you are described by the New York Times as, and I quote, that rare politician who can write and write and write movingly and genuinely about himself. And your story is extraordinary. As this week's cover article in Time tells us, and I quote, Senator Obama's father was from Kenya and his mother from Kansas. The senator has told the story in brilliant, painful detail in his first book, Dreams of My Father, which is the best written memoir ever produced by an American politician. And I end quote. A central theme of the book is that Barack Obama learned from an early age how important it was to bridge the many divides of the world in which he grew up, which is the same world as the one in which we all live today. At Harvard Law School, he was the first African-American to be elected president of the Harvard Law Review. He was chosen for that prestigious position not only because he was near the top of his class, but also because he had a unique ability to win over conservative and liberal students alike. As one of his classmates told Time Magazine this week, most of the class were liberals, but there was a growing conservative presence, and there were fights between right and left about almost every issue. Barack won the election because the conservatives thought he would take their arguments into account. After graduating from law school, Senator Obama entered public service. He started as a community org organizer and a civil rights attorney in Chicago, representing victims of employment and housing discrimination and teaching constitutional law at the University of Chicago. In 1997, he was elected to the Illinois Senate, where for the next seven years he played a leading role reaching across party lines on difficult issues to achieve results. He forged coalitions of Democrats and Republicans to help working families, creating programs like the state earned income tax credit that provided over $100 million in tax relief for lower and middle income families. He pushed through a bipartisan expansion of early childhood education and he worked with law enforcement officials to enact legislation requiring that all interrogations and confessions in cases involving the death penalty be videotaped. On the national stage, he spoke out early against the war in Iraq, and he supported the war in Afghanistan. Here in Boston, he electrified the Democratic National Convention two years ago in a keynote address that charted the common ground that unites all Americans. We worship an awesome God in the blue states, he said, and we don't like federal agents poking around in our libraries in the red states. We coach Little League in the blue states, and we've got gay friends in the red states. There is not a black America and white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. Elected in an Illinois landslide to the U.S. Senate in 2004, Senator Obama is now in a position to project his special brand of political leadership on the national level. Leadership based on consensus building, not slashing and burning. Leadership based on listening to opposing views and responding with fact and truth, not destructive distortion. A brand of leadership, I might add, in great demand, but very short supply in our political life today. Senator, again, it's a great privilege to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
To moderate this evening's forum, we're also privileged to have one of our nation's leading commentators, Bob Herbert of the New York Times. Bob has been a star, as many of you know, at other Kennedy Library forums, and we're pleased to welcome him back here tonight. Bob joined the Times as an op-ed columnist in 1993, and twice a week he helps us understand what's important in politics and our national life. Bob Herbert began his career with the Newark Star-Ledger, where he became a city editor. Before joining the Times, he was a national correspondent for NBC, a founding panelist on Sunday Edition, the weekly discussion program on WCBS, and the host of Hotline, a weekly issues program on New York Public Television. He's won many awards for his reporting and commentary, including recently the American Society of Newspaper Editors Award for Distinguished Commentary. Please join me in welcoming Barack Obama and Bob Herbert to the stage of the Kennedy Library. There you go. Uh, Senator, it's an honor to have you here. I know we're on a tight schedule, so we're not going to waste a lot of time. Members of the audience will see people coming around with uh, pencils, and we're going to take some written questions, and we'll, um, if we have time, we'll answer a few at the end of the interview. <clears throat> I noticed uh, upstairs, I'm looking at the pictures of President Kennedy, and I recall from your book that you were born, if I'm not mistaken, in the year Senator Kennedy was inaugurated. Is that right? That is correct. So, wow. The, um, are you getting enough attention lately? <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 the first thing I have to say to everybody is, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, I had forgotten uh, how wonderful Boston weather is this time of year. <laughs> and, uh, and we were delayed in a holding pattern over the skies for about half an hour and an hour back in New York. But uh, I appreciate everybody taking the time to, to uh, and, and, and everybody's patience. And... Let's start with the war in Iraq, which is going horribly and which is, uh, seems to be the big topic in the upcoming elections, yeah. and we're very close to them. You were not in favor of the war, but you have not called for a precipitous withdrawal of U.S. troops. So what should the United States do in Iraq? And if the Democrats take control of either or both houses of Congress, uh, what could the party do to move us toward a more acceptable solution? Well, uh, the, uh, as you mentioned, Bob, I, in fact, we talked, uh, I think, before I was elected, and yeah. at that point I had uh, made my position clear. I thought that uh, the war was not based on reason and fact, uh, but rather on ideology. And uh, unfortunately, uh, most of my worst fears came to pass. Uh, my view had been at the time, and continues to be, that once we were in, we had some obligations to try to stabilize the situation. And so over the last year, as I've watched uh, the con conditions continue to deteriorate, and I made a visit to Iraq in January, uh, my view was let us see if we can give this political process a chance and try to uh, buck up the capacity of the Iraqi government to uh, create some order 